Hey, thanks for joining in to this new episode of Extreme Reloading. You know, we are nearing the end of Season 7. Today, we are returning to loading the 243 Winchester. Now, you may recall that I've been working with these 90 grain Lapawa Scanner L bullets, and you know, they've been really a good bullet for me in that 243 Winchester Ruger number no. one rifle. What we've done previously is I've found that I can increase the precision of these particular bullets by changing the bullet seating depth, or in other words, by pulling that bullet further out so it is closer to the lands, and thereby reducing what's called jump. The seating that I'm using uh, is 0 0.02 or two hundredths of an inch, exactly two hundredths of an inch off the lands, and I'm measuring that from the ogive of these bullets using the Hornady uh, comparator kit. We talked about that a number of episodes ago and I showed how to do that. So if you don't know or miss that part, uh, feel free to look for the playlist in our description below and you'll be able to catch up on all those past videos. But you know when we change the bullet seating depth in a cartridge, um, especially as much as we did uh, with this particular load, what's also happening is that I'm changing, in effect, the size of the burn chamber inside that case. I have effectively made it larger because the bullet is taking up or consuming less of that space. So what I decided to do is I am working up or going to work up a brand new optimal charge weight or velocity node for this particular load. And the first thing uh, that I have done is I went out to the range after loading quite a number or a number of different cases with varying uh, charge weights. Now what I did is I started with my current optimal charge weight of 44.0 grains of Hodgden 4350. That's another extreme powder, pretty darn good powder. Now that 44.0 grains of H4350 is the optimal charge weight for this same bullet when it was seated, you know, quite a ways into that uh, into that case. In fact, I had a uh, a jump of about a tenth of an inch with that original load. So that 44 grain powder charge was kind of my starting point, but I wanted to see if the same optimal charge weight sill would still exist for this particular load, this slightly different load. I really didn't think it would, but I wanted to give it the chance. So I backed off my powder charge uh, for my first load, and I actually shot 43.8 grains of 4350. My second round was 44 grains, and then the third round was 44.2 grains, and as you can see here, I am moving up in two-tenths of a grain increments. I ended up shooting all seven of the loads that I prepared, ending up with 45.0 grains of that Hodgden 4350. And as you can see there, I ended up with a final muzzle velocity of 3,262 feet per second. That was quite a bit of a dramatic increase in velocities between the previous round, round number six, and that final round, round number seven. Kind of indicating to me that we're getting up into some pressure spikes, and I don't want to load that, and certainly that is not the optimal charge weight. But take a look at rounds number three and four. The, this was 44.2 and 44.4 grains, and it gave me 3,216 and then 3,221. So only five feet per second difference between those two charges. That is a nice, strong uh, optimal charge weight right there. So now I have a new optimal charge weight based on this bullet seating of 
44.3 grains. That's different by three-tenths of a grain. Not a dramatic difference, of course, three-tenths of a grain difference, but I'm still going to test it out. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be heading out to the range in just a matter of minutes, and I'm going to be shooting three different five-shot groups with the same 243 Ruger number no. 1 rifle. I'm going to shoot this at 100 yards off the bench. My first is going to be the same exact load I've been using for years prior to all this extra uh, experimentation that I've been doing in this season of extreme reloading. That is the same 90 grain Lapua Skinner L bullets loaded with 44.0 grains of Hodgdon 4350. Then I'm going to shoot another five shot group with the exact same powder charge but with the new and modified uh, bullet seating depth. And then lastly, I'm going to be firing a five-shot group with um, the, the same bullet seating depth, same powder, but the new optimal charge weight of 44.3 grains. Now, I hope you follow all that. We're going to head out to the range, see how these three different groups uh, respond, how they perform, and, uh, and then we'll come back in and talk about those results. I'm going to fire five rounds of Fowlers, the target in the upper left. This is just my standard load. I'm using Nossler brass in this case, but we'll see how that all pans out. Thirty-one fifty-seven. Four. One eighty five. One last one. Wow, that one stepped her up, 32.04. Now these rounds right here are my Lapua brass, very, very carefully prepared and sorted Lapua brass, 90 grain Lapua Skinner L bullets, and they have that kind of a long seating depth. This was worked up previously. And it's, this is using the same powder charge that I used, you know, quite some time ago. Uh, the next group we're going to fire will be identical, save for the powder charge has been optimized for this particular bullet seating, and it's an optimal charge weight. So let's go ahead and fire five rounds, 100 yards, bullseye in the upper right. Yep, oh, good. 32.15. Man. Roughly 3,200 again. Exactly 3,200. Wow, 
That's all right, 31.97. Let's see how she did. Seven point six feet per second standard deviation and an average of thirty two oh one. No surprise there. Nice job. And I don't know, I mean I can see some of the rounds down range. Don't know how well she really grouped. It actually looks like kind of a larger group. So next up, I'm gonna let the gun cool a little bit, and then I'm gonna shoot the next group, five shot group again. As I said, very, very similar setup, except this has got an optimal charge weight for this bullet seating. Bullseye in the center. Thirty-two sixty-one. Yeah, that's okay. It's looking very nice. Oh, that one pulled high at the 12 o'clock. Doesn't me, though. That last one. Very good. I think that was the exact same velocity as the previous one. Let's take a look. Eighteen feet per second standard deviation, so not quite as good. That's five shots. Okay. Thirty-two thirty. Well, here's our results, folks. Three different groups in the order I talked about those. Original, I'll call it my old or my standard load. It gave us a five-shot group of 1.59 MOA. You know, by the way, all three of these groups didn't shoot as well as I normally do, or as the, the rifle normally does. Not sure why that was. The weather conditions should have been pretty good. I noticed that the humidity was uh, up quite a bit higher than what I'm accustomed to uh, with this rifle and this load. Don't know if that could possibly make that much of a difference, but I'll say that all three of these were a larger group than what I'm normally accustomed to and even what we saw earlier in this season of extreme reloading. Nonetheless, second group Again, the only difference here between the first and the second, same powder charge, and by the way, the cases, the primers, everything else was identical, and essentially an identical performance on the precision, 1.61 MOA. Effectively and statistically, there's no difference between a 1.6 and a 1.6 if we just round it to the one decimal place. But now we're looking at that new load um, again, with that new optimal charge weight of 44.3 grains, and we've dropped it to effectively 1.3 MOA, uh, getting close to one and a quarter MOA. And I would say, statistically, this probably did do better uh, if we could run that, even though we have a very small sample size. But this did a nice job. So it looks like I am going to stick with, I'm going to call that the load that I'm going to be using in my rifle, on this particular rifle, in the future. 44.3 grains of Hodgdon 4350, Lapua Skinner L bullets, 90 grain bullets, Lapua brass, uh, all that careful preparation, and the CCI match primers that I've been using. And I've also had good luck, by the way, with the Federal uh, match primers, gold medal match primers as well. So this is kind of the process. Um, you know, we, we, we find a bullet, and this is from past experience, 
uh, shooting this, this rifle and working up and testing a lot of different bullets. Um, but I found a bullet that performs quite well in this particular rifle and with this particular powder charge. And I ran up an initial optimal charge weight, identified, uh, identified the velocity node there, and uh, started shooting some groups. But then I said, what's going to happen, because this is a, is, is a single shot rifle and I can pull that bullet out as far as I need to, to impact the, uh, or get close to those lands without jamming the bullet into it. But we did that and we saw that, gee, this rifle ten tends to shoot better with a fairly short or small jump to the lands. Okay, that's good, but then because I changed it so dramatically um, in the bullet seating depth, I went back and fine-tuned this thing to a better powder charge and it worked. You see, it worked. We have further reduced the precision uh, of this uh, or increased or improved the precision of this rifle. We reduce the shot size or uh, group size for this rifle and I'm going to keep shooting it. But I bet that a pro an approach just like what we use today is going to work for you as well. Hey, thanks for watching Extreme Reloading. See you next time.